We want you to collect the books. We're going we're gonna to have them collect the song books and take them back in there. All right, we got to put them to work. Children were given by God to be servants. Galatians 4. Galatians 4. Yes. Why you think they had a lot of children in Israel so they can work the fields? All right, work the fields. All right, here you go. Ryan and I were talking. Um, back in the day, I mean, before Social Security and all the other things, pensions and stuff, your, your Social Security, your pension, your retirement was your children. And what you put in them, you, they were going to take care of you in your old age. And that's why they had a lot of sons in particular in those harsh times. That has they, to do with the honor your mother and father. Honor your mother and your take father. That's right. Your old age. And that's the first commandment with promise. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, that's why he did it. So I remind Jada Lynn every day. She was, she's my servant. <laughs> go, go get that for daddy. Get that for daddy. Do this. But if the Lord tarries, we, we're going to put the word of God in her so she can take care of mom and I when, when we get older. All right, a couple of announcements before we get going. The order of ministry, 1 Timothy 2, the men lead, the, the sisters are led of the Lord, but there's decent and in order, so we want to do that. Today is Sunday, the 13th of August, 2017. We're continuing our look in the book of Titus, and today's title is the number one good work. That's always good to know, so we're going to look at that. A couple other announcements. Paul says the first thing we want to do in public worship is to pray, thanking the Lord for his grace. Pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. So many people say they pray for us here and pray for me and my family as the minister, but also all of you guys. And so I'm going to be sharing that as well. But we need to be in prayer for our brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world. Pray for your civil authorities as well. Even though they're heathen, they still have an impact on our lives. And we want to pray that we can have a quiet and peaceable life. I wrote John and Melanie Kent. That's our brother and sister in the Lord who visited us for the first time last week. John is here. Melanie couldn't make it, but the, and the children are here. We just appreciate your presence again, brother, and give your wife our love. We'll be in prayer for her. We have Jerry Lynn. I'm going to have to call you Jerry Lynn from, because my wife, Krista, is Krista Lynn, and my daughter is Jada Lynn. I love that Lynn on there, so I hope you don't mind. Everybody else call you Jerry. Uh, huh? Oh, well. Uh, that's how they spell it. I like that. Sounds the same, though. I love, I love anything with Lynn on So welcome. And you're from Bakersfield. Yes. So thank you for making this a long trip. But you know what I tell people? It's worth it to come and, and fellowship with those of like precious faith. Question and answer time we're going to have right after the first hour. Open question and answer. If you've got any questions about life, the word, whatever, feel free. Now, that's our private session because sometimes people have personal things. But then we do a Facebook Live for those outside of the ministry. We do a Facebook Live Q&A. Rent and offering. We rent this place out monthly. It costs money to have a ministry and, to, and the other needs of ministry, materials and other things. So. That's how we pay for it. There's our box. We don't even take collection. It's between you and the Lord. And then those online, you can always go to YouTube, NorCal Grace. At the About page, there's a donate here. They ask how they can get back. Pray for us and give. That's the best thing you can do from afar. Speaking of afar, once a year, we try to take a trip down to Southern California to encourage the saints in that area. And we've been getting a lot of feedback, I have, through phone calls especially, from people who are watching down in the LA area. Many of them are right in the LA area. So for the past month, Chris and I have been looking, different hotels, whatever, to meet, because we're probably gonna have a couple of dozen people. That's what we're looking for. We've come to find out that with people's schedule and so forth, a Sunday is the best time to meet, because a lot of people are off. And Sunday the 10th of September is the Sunday we're looking at to have a study of the scriptures. And we're gonna have a Q&A. It's gonna basically be the same type of service we do each Sunday here, okay? So we appreciate you guys sacrificing that Sunday, but we're doing that so that we can encourage other saints down in Southern California. And I'm actually going to read some feedback from one of those saints who's so happy we're going to do that. I got, a, I got a number of them on my voicemail that who are happy we're coming down in. But we're going to look for 11 a.m., so it'd be just like we do here. And Montebello, it's about 10 minutes outside of L.A. Anything in L.A. is an arm and a leg, as you know. But right outside, even 10 minutes outside, you can rent a nice conference room for not much at one of the local hotel. So that's what we're going to do. I'll give all the specifics of the location, but that's what it's looking like. Montebello. I never even heard of it, but it's right outside of LA for those who know that. Uh, Brother Matthew won't be here today, but he just texted me because he had work to do. But his family lives down there in Pasadena, I think. So he's going to be down there with us. So we're expecting a couple dozen people or so, and hopefully they can make it. Sister Diane Evans, she's a very wonderful artist. She does all type of art. She did pencil art. 
she made a picture of Jada Lynn and uh, her cat before we had to give the cat away and other, other designs and so forth. In Romans 16, just like with Sister Phoebe, we want to help her with her business. Uh, Romans 16, 1 and 2, whatever business she has. She has a website. If you want to see her work or if you want to purchase her work or have her make some art for you, she will do all that. It's D-I-Y-A-Arts, A-R-T-S dot com. So Daya-Arts dot com. I want you guys and those who are watching, go look at her work. She's willing to draw or paint anything for you. She's very talented, and she wants to use it for the Lord. And, and us saints, we can help her in that business, a sister in a business as becoming saints, as the, as the Bible says. All right, let's get into our feedback as we get going here. I like to share with you small and large feedback we get. One brother says, God bless each of you all in getting the truth out into this darkened world. We'll get something as simple as that. You'll say, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your ministry. You do not realize how many lives you are touching for eternity, brother. Much love. And, and this is uh, Lee and Amy. We're starting to realize through technology we can get this feedback. And to learn that we're over in 82 different separate countries, our little ministry here, that if you just look, at it, it seems like nothing. But God says we walk by faith and not by sight. We have a great impact around the world through technology, the blessing of it. Somebody says, preach, Brother Ron. Oh, this Brother King. Preach, Brother Ron. We need more preaching about marriage and submission and so forth. There's not a lot being taught on a regular basis about how marriage works. Satan likes to attack the institution of marriage. If he can attack marriage and family, he can destroy the whole foundation of society. So we need to learn more about that from God's word. One brother says, not many people come to the grace message. He says, why do you think that not many are coming to the grace message rightly divided? It seems like we are a little flock that only a little flock knows and understands. And I'm going to answer that during the q and I'm going to show you the Bible's dynamic of why only a few people believe God's word, okay? We're going to look at that during the Q&A. This one is about Catholicism. I want advice on how to talk with my young daughter about right division. Her mom is a Catholic. She goes to Catholic school. He says, my other daughter is a Baptist. And she took quickly to dispensationalism and right division. So there's kind of a split in the family. I won't give the name, but I'll be answering that during the Q&A as well. Because that's good for a lot of people, right? A lot of people have families, have different views of scripture and stuff, how to make that work. And it says, any advice would be helpful, and they want to help their children. It says, hello, Brother Ron. I have several things to discuss. First, I was wondering, do you have sample tracks and dispensational maps that I see you use on YouTube? And basically what they mean is this right here. So we order these. As some of your offerings go towards ordering these charts. And in some of my older videos, you'll see this large chart behind me, okay? So we give these out free of charge. Um, I, I'll just get to some of the ones. I wanted to read this one. This one is from a sister in the Lord down in Southern California. One of the reasons we're going to do this trip because, and by the way, we had this plan before I got this. I got this in the mail this week. And it just verified and thanked the Lord that one of the things she's going to bring up, she says, Ron, we need fellowship. We, we don't have any fellowship physical fellowship like we get in here. And so I just wrote her back and put it in the mail today. Chris and I stopped at the Carmichael Post Office, put it right in there. And I told her, sister, we're coming down there and you, gonna, you be there because we're going to give you a big hug because I'll tell you what, what she said. Dear Brother Ron and the brothers and sisters at NorCal Grace, oh, what a blessing the prayer study. We did a six-part study on prayer. Oh, what a blessing the prayer study has been. This study should be written and published as a book. I got to get somebody on that, kind of write it out for me. The study was so insightful and helpful. Thank you. God bless you. As well, other things have come to light for me. In 1 Thessalonians 3, Paul sends Timothy to the Thessalonians to establish them and to comfort them. So not just to build them up in the word, but to comfort them. And this is what she says. I see that comfort is actual physical fellowship how desperately we need that fellowship of believers. I praise God that at least we have the internet. She's realizing that just seeing people live and in person and being encouraged is part of what God wants. And she's right. That's the main reason we want to take that trip so that people who watch by way of internet can actually see us physically in the flesh. And it really matters. Remember Paul and Titus, Paul could not even go on in ministry until he found Titus, his brother. It meant so much to him. She says, also, it's obvious to me now 
that there is a difference between position in Christ and practice. She means like salvation and sanctification. It's almost as if the so-called seminaries, she has in quotes, try not to see the difference between position and practice, and they don't teach it. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. That's right. I weep for joy at the privilege to study in this way and for the sorrows of lost time in my life to study this way. I won't give her age, but you know, she's, she's an older woman and she feels so sorry that she's wasted her life in Christ before she learned right division. And by the way, I hear that from a lot of people. The one guy says, I wish the Lord tarries for a while. I'm on the other end of the spectrum, I don't. I want him to come now, I'm sorry, but I've been on the front lines for a while. Finally, I would like to know if there are verses I should memorize. I am, and she gives her age, I won't give it. I am this particular age, so memorizing is not good for me, but it also is good challenge for me. Perhaps there are a few important verses that I need to uh, pack away. So I'm gonna send her some verses that she can practice and study. I thank God every day for you, your family, and NorCal Grace, that's all you guys. I praise the Lord for your faithfulness to ministry. Thank you, love, in Christ, Sister Lori. Lori's down in Southern California, so I wrote her, I said, Okay, you're going to come on September 10th, okay? Because I want to give her a big hug, and Kristen J. Lynn does do too. We've we known Lauren a, a, a while.